guys welcome to Amber Acres it is September 30th about 2 15 in the afternoon it is 80 degrees outside now I don't like I don't like hunting when it's this hot but I came out Saturday and it was like 83 on Saturday and uh, I had seven deer standing in front of me out here in the food plot and there ain't much there ain't much left of the food plot. The stuff I planted in July, end of July, never grew. Uh, there's a few beans, or not beans, a uh, few of the winter peas I see here and there when I when I walk out there. But other than that, the beans, the beans only have a couple leaves left on them. And we haven't had any freezing or anything like that, so the beans are still good. But they're... They're kind of picking away, so I don't know if they're picking at them them peas, a couple of them peas or and the beans. But there were seven of them out here. There was a doe and two fawns, and then another doe and her fawn, and then two bucks came out, a little little fork. Actually, it was six, but it's not le a leal six. And then a, a knobby buck. So that knobby buck was bigger than both of those does that came out with the fawns. So I let them, I let them all go because it was so warm, and I didn't want to. If I, if I would have shot any one of them, I would have had to get it back, go run and get ice, you know, and and pack it in ice to to do anything with it. So I'm out here tonight. It's supposed to cold front is supposed to be coming through. It's supposed to get down in the 40s tonight, and then and then tomorrow it's only supposed to be a high of 60 something, and then it's supposed to be in the 30s tomorrow night. So I figured it's a good time to come. If I shoot one, at least it's going to be cold enough tonight that I can get it to the butcher in the morning and it won't be a big deal, you know. So I'm hoping that that knobby buck is a pretty good sized deer, but he's just got, you know, he's just got bumps on his head. So if he's bigger than them does, I, I'm thinking I'm going to use my antlerless tag on him. I got all kinds of little bucks running around here. I got, um, what would that have been, last Wednesday. So th it's Monday tonight. So so last Wednesday I went out and I had a, a little six-pointer, basket rack six-pointer, and mutt, which is uh, uh, one one spike on one side. It doesn't have nothing on the other side. So they came out and they were out there for, I don't know, an hour or so. I could have shot either one of them, but I let, I let them go. You know, again, it was really hot. So I'm hoping one of them come out. I don't want to, I don't like shooting the does. If, if I would have a big doe come out by herself and just be out there by herself, I, I'd probably shoot it because I wouldn't feel bad about it. But when they come out with their fawns and the fawns are sucking on them, or trying to suck on them, they're, they're pretty much weaned off now. Um, but I, I don't like to shoot them when they're out there like that. So... So if I see that, I usually let those go, and I wait until more like October-ish, you know, then, then then they start separating themselves a little bit, and the doe will come out by itself. That was two years ago. I waited till November 4th, I think it was. We had a snowstorm, and I shot a doe that came out all by herself. And uh, the other ones that were out there did not did not care for her being out there, so I figured, well, she's, she's a loner. She's by herself, so I shot her. I'm hoping I'm hoping that I can I can get a shot at uh, either that that knobby buck or a lone or a lone doe. As long as it's going to be cold tonight, that's that's the main goal. So that's why we're out here tonight, and we're gonna hopefully see something. So I want to show you the bow here. I did some changes. I know I had that arrow video with the Carbon Express, and I had a scope on at that time. So I changed this, so let's let's take a look at that once and I'll show you what I'm using now.
So I took my Barnett three dot scope and I took that off my Barnett and put it on this Bruin Ambush 345. And the reason is I just did not like that scope. I could not, I seem to have issues shooting with that scope. And it's just that I'm not lining my eye up to get a good, to get it lined up with the crosshairs properly. And I'm missing the target. And, and when I put this one on there, I'm hitting the target. No problem. So this is my setup. This is what I'm using. And hopefully this works for me. And then, uh, the camera I use is a Minolta 4K. It's got the flip screen. So all I do is flip it and it comes on. And then I can I can watch the deer out there. I don't even have to really lean forward and look out the window. I can just turn the camera and uh, watch the deer um, as they're standing out there eating. So it says 4K on the side, but the quality the quality is a it's a good camera during daylight hours as soon as it gets dark it gets real grainy it does have night vision on it I really haven't really used the night vision um, because I'm a firm believer that uh, if you can't see the shoot why are you sitting in your stand you know so I, I usually leave my stand early if they're not out here in the field by well right now it's uh, gets dark around 7 ish if they're not out here by 6.30, I'm, I'm getting out of my stand. Because by the time they come out, they're going to want to eat for a while. And then I'm stuck here, and it's it's not a good situation. So that's the way I hunt. But this is a good camera. It works great for sitting up here in the blind. I have it on a little tiny tripod. And uh, I just flip it open, and it's on. It's it uh, Just push the button, the, the button right here on the back. I don't know where my finger is. There it is. This button right here on the back, and it's recording. So this uh, this phone I'm using now is my new S24, and it seems to take really good pictures. So I don't know how these videos are going to turn out. It's kind of dark in here, but um, we'll see. We'll see how this works. I did notice when I was shooting, taking a picture of the bow there, that it's. It's doing the same thing the old my old S8 did. It's it's focusing because of the light. That's an issue with these phones. So I'm gonna have to watch that when I'm doing other stuff because it's always trying to focus on something else besides what I'm I want it to be focused on. All right, it's time to get hunting. I will uh, I will start the cameras rolling as soon as something comes out in the field. Okay, guys. As you've seen in the intro. I messed up big time I've only had that happen one one time to me but I shot for behind the shoulder and it went in front and went through the neck and I was still able to get find a deer I found it the next day so what I did is I went back and I slowed it that slowed it way down so you can kind of see what what happened there there's a tree right in front of me here so the the camera angle and where I'm shooting from are two different, complete different angles. So I had a perfectly clear shot at that deer. But when I shot, I don't know if he, he heard noise of the bow or what. Say this is him, and I'm shooting up here for the shoulder. He he dove and turned just enough that that arrow went, went right in his back hip. Okay? I think I, I think I made a halfway decent shot. I just he he dove and turned just just at the right time and it hit it hit his back hip and it went in that triangle shaped bone in his hip. So I tracked him for a ways. There there was no blood anywhere. I could not find any blood. The arrow did not look like it penetrated at all. It was just dangling across the field here. So I think he's fine. I think he's just fine. But I haven't seen him yet. I have not hunted this stand now for a week. That was October 3rd when that happened. It is now the 11th. So I have not hunted this stand. I have not been in this stand. I have not been out here. I hunted a different section down by uh, below food plot one over there in the middle of the woods. I sat down there a couple of nights. So in, in the meantime now it's been freezing. All week it's been freezing at night. 
So I, I really don't think there's much left to the food plot here. I'm not, my hopes are kind of low for seeing any deer. Um, I did walk out there today, earlier today. I walked through just to see, and there are still some leaves on the stems, not much. I mean, I'm gonna give it another shot here, you know, hopefully, I still, I still gotta fill my doe tag. Um, don't know if he'll ever come back this way, but I know the doe has been out here. According to my cameras, the doe has still been out here. So maybe, maybe she'll come out by herself once and I'll just take her. But yeah, that's the way it goes, you know. So today it is 75 degrees out, so that's why I'm only in a t-shirt. It is uh, supposed to be a front coming through, and they said when that front hits, it's going to drop really quick. So I'm hoping that's enough to spark some movement and get some deer out here in the in the field for one one last shot maybe. Um, I don't know what to do about that big eight pointer. I I don't know. I think I just have to wait for the rut and hope hopefully he comes around. You know, looking for a doe. That's that's he's totally been nocturnal this whole September October. He's been nocturnal the whole time. I have no pictures of him during daylight hours period so that's that's the way that is and other people have seen him up on the road they've seen him crossing the road like at five in the morning all I can do is keep trying with the food plots Ob obviously I got to do a better job time to pay attention here it's uh you know it's about 2 30 ish in the afternoon so I'll let you know what happens. guys welcome back I was able to get my uh, doe tag filled last night kind of a weird night I just kind of grabbed my bow and I went and ran out to the stand about two o'clock um, I forgot my camera my camera was on the charger in the barn over there and I forgot I forgot the camera so I got none of this on film but just before dark five deer came out in the field and the two big does started going at it and they were standing on their hind legs, you know, slapping each other in the face and whatever, whatever, biting each other. And it was a way better fight than the Tyson-Paul fight the other night. As soon as they were done fighting, I picked up my bow while they were fighting because they were kind of standing right in front of me. So I picked up my bow while they were fighting, while everybody was distracted. And as soon as they were done fighting, I took the shot. And I thought I had a clear, clear side shot at her. But again, just like the other one in earlier in this video, my arrow went to the left and I hit her way back, but it, this time it must've hit an artery. Uh, the arrow went right through. So I'm thinking it hit an artery because there was a lot of, lot of blood um, and I was able, we were able to track her. I had the, the neighbor guy down here, Tim, came and helped me out. He's actually a very, very good tracker compared to me. Uh, when we found it, it was still somewhat alive. So here, take here's a little clip of that. Well, I filled my antlerless tag tonight. I shot it way in the back again. Don't know why I'm missing by that much, but. So I was really worried when we were tracking it because there was a lot of blood in spots where where it like stopped and it it bled a lot. It started moving. And then you couldn't couldn't hardly find any blood until you found the next you know puddle. If you leave these things late till the next day, there ain't gonna be nothing left of your deer. It's gonna be eaten. Um, I'm glad we found her. I I don't know what how long that took us. Uh, I came back to the house and 
and put the bow away. And then, uh, then I called Tim and went down by Tim and picked him up. And it was well over an hour or more, you know, that, that she was out there. So when we got to her, she was still alive, but she, she was not able to move anymore. And uh, so we just waited a little bit uh, till she passed. But uh, I'm glad I did that. It's, it's uh, November 17th today, so it's almost gun, opening a gun season. And usually once gun season hits, I don't see much for deer around here. So I'm glad I got her, got her, got her done last night. If you, if you watch the earlier part of this video, you'll see that I, I haven't filmed much since middle of October. And, and the reason I haven't filmed much since middle of October is because there have not been any deer around here since the middle of October. They just disappear and I don't know where they go, but they just disappear and all I had was, was the two fawns every night, you know, when I'd sit out there, the two fawns would come out, usually around three, three o'clock-ish, you know, they, they come out and they walk around the field and then they leave and nobody else ever comes out. And then this the past week here now, I'm one, I want to say it was Monday or Tuesday when I was out there, I had a doe and with, a, with, with mutt following it around and uh, she didn't want nothing to do with him, but he was, he was hot on her tail. And that was the first buck sign that I've seen, you know, since the middle of October. That's the first buck I've seen since the middle of October. And Mutt is the unicorn, if you watch in the earlier videos, it's the one with just one antler. I call him a unicorn. So I'm glad I got it. We got some meat in the freezer. Um, I don't know if I'll get out hunting the rest of this week or not. If you like these videos, you know, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and we will catch you on the next one.